Yeah, so even though um, it says building simulation skills from an architect's perspective, I'm not actually, I have to um, admit something, I'm not actually an architect. Um, I'm just a sort of a wannabe architect, uh, because my initial background is in astrophysics. Um, and then I basically finished my master's in astrophysics working on um, the simulation of globular clusters. So I did computational astrophysics, it was simulation of globular uh, clusters, which is a group of clusters that flies around the Milky Way core, um, and it was formed about 12 billion years ago. So I looked at this at some point and I questioned myself, why am I working on something that happened 12 billion years ago, when I should be using my skills to do something for the future. So I looked around and I realized that if I switched to building physics instead, I could be part of environmental design and basically um, you know, help contribute to a better world. And use it to design, use, it, use my skills to design better buildings. So through um, working at an engineering practice called Atelier 10, worked there for a few years, and working at a startup looking at collaboration across the building industry, um, and at Edward Fosters. So I work in the specialist building group, which is a sort of in-house consultancy group within, within um, the company. So one thing to think about with Foster Partners, uh, Worldwide is 1,500 people, and in London, our office is 1,200 people. Um, and so we're a group of, of sort of 20 misfits, um, 20 people who have a very diverse experience in, um, you know, so I'm an astrophysicist, the person who sits next to me is an electrical engineer, I'm a mathematician, I have a few architects turned geeks. It's quite a, it's quite a nice group. Um, and together we look at book physics, so we do a lot of simulation, um, both in terms of CFD, lighting, daylight, um, and acoustics. Um, we also have a big section looking at design and geometry, so we try and say, okay, well, knowing what we know about the physics of the building, how can we improve um, both the design, but also the geometry? So if we, for example, look at um, the fabrication of something, now that we understand fabrication, from a physics point of view, can we use um, for example, concrete 3D printing, you know, mixing those two um, disciplines. And then we also have a, a focus on research and innovation. So one of our projects was looking at how do we build a moon base. So this was really interesting for me because it was the first time I could use my actual sort of astrophysics experience to say, okay, if you have a certain amount of radiation, how thick do your walls need to be if they're made of um, you know, solid rock? versus hydrogen, versus water, etc. So it was the first time I could do a sort of pseudo simulation of um, astrophysics within the built environment. Um, and so one, one fun part of our work is that we work on quite, um, quite large timescales. So this is a simulation of a, a master plan in India we're looking at wind across um, a sort of one by five kilometer, one by eight kilometer um, uh, area that we were working on. And this actually links back to what Eleanor was saying. Because, so we've been working uh, quite a lot with this um, with open foam, which is an open source um, CFD software that we use for wind simulation. And one of the reasons we've switched to this is that it's open source, so we can actually see what's in, inside the code. And it gives us, um, you know, the two people in my team who do the CFD are actually aerospace engineers, so they sort of know what they're talking about. Um, and it gives them the chance as well to write new pieces of code and fit that into the workflow. And, and so I, I would agree with you more that opening up what's inside the simulation is, is so essential because A, it gives us, us uh, better trust in, in the tools, and it allows us to extend them as well. So often we go from the, the large scale to, to the slightly smaller scale, like on the size of the building. So this is a, a tower in, in San Francisco, where we're looking at uh, multiple elements, but one of them was the uh, amount of ventilation, natural ventilation in the apartments. And um, this was just to identify parts of the ventilate parts of the apartments where we were having um, trouble if we open the windows and it's showing like if we open different windows, how does the air flow through the apartments? And so one reason I, I thought it was nice to show this one as well is because even though um, you know 
we are still the in-house team within a larger firm, we still have a lot of work in, in uh, convincing architectural teams to follow our advice. And so they often have a lot of different things they need to balance, and you know, our advice is one of them. And so they often ask for as much sort of visual output and as much graphical output as, as we can give them. And so often we might do a perfect simulation, but if we do not communicate the results in a visually engaging way, then it sort of, you know, it doesn't have the impact that we need it to have. Um, and especially if they, they say, oh, we can't show this to a client, you know, they, they often want us to give as much uh, graphical output that they can help to, you know, um, to give advice to clients and to, to help them convince them to make some certain choices. And finally, sort of going back to a very small scale, um, this was for a project here in London where we, um, we were looking at the, the sort of very local comfort for, for, desk, uh, for desks, um, both in terms of um, the, uh, the lighting, but also in terms of uh, um, thermal comfort. And again, this was a way of showing, okay, there's a radiant panel above this, um, showing teams, clients, consultants, um, you know, what, how it actually worked and that the, the air would fill up and keep, um, keep people cool by um, absorbing the heat uh, up, up top. And so that brings me to um, another thing, which is we, uh, we have quite a lot of trust in simulations, but they we hope there's uh, another big part of our workflow is to actually do um, mock-up tests. Um, so either in a laboratory uh, or outside as well. I've just finished working on a quantified mock-up uh, of a daylight uh, daylight space in the Middle East, and we often use the, the mock-ups and the simulations hand in hand. So we do a sim we simulate we simulate a lot of options. We pick a good one, and then we test that um, in a mock-up, and then we use that to inform, to sort of calibrate our models, tune them, and then um, basically come to a sort of final conclusion based on sort of informed, informed, uh, further informed simulation. One other very important way that these mock-ups help us do our work is through, uh, you know, working because they're so tangible. They help communicate the results. They help get people on the same side. You know, on this we we took clients, uh, we took architects inside this space so that they could not only see the results on a false color plot, they could actually feel what it was like. And the same with this um, this daylight mockup that we've been doing. Unfortunately, I can't I can't show it yet because it's still a confidential project. But um, it was very powerful to have people, especially daylight, like, is, is extremely complicated to really convince people like based on the full screen plot or even on you know it's a screen because the brightness range that you have in daylight is just so vast. And to be able to take people into a space and say this is what it will feel like, this is what not only what it will look like, what it will feel like. Uh, and then to be able to say and based on these mock-ups we actually you know have much more certainty in our this was a museum space so they really care about the maximum daylight levels. Um, and so that was a really powerful way as well to do this. So even um, I'd really recommend doing stuff like this. Sometimes it's not always it's not always possible on a larger scale or in a, um, for cost purposes. Uh, but sometimes you can build a small version of it as well, and that that can really sell sell people even if it's a, even if it's just an approximation of the, of the design. Yeah, so this is a, a brief overview of some of the stuff that we do. Um, I'd be happy to answer more questions and have a bit of a debate. With, uh, with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite the third speaker up, uh, Doug Pondo from Lagger Walk. He's an MEP leader, and he will be giving you the presentation to 